Okay, real talk. If you've not seen the previous two videos regarding this entire subject, then you'd better head there first because I'm going to have less time in this video to do full scale recaps. And the reason I say this is because the Nights into Dreams data mine project is moving at a mile a minute, and just when I finish writing the script about an update, suddenly there's another breakthrough. I mean, this team have been kicking down barriers on a daily basis. I am serious about this. Last month, thanks to Grammar Warden's image tool, we were finally able to start digging into 2D textures and sprites from the Saturn version of Nights into Dreams. This was something that had been impossible for many, many years, and it was a landmark moment. I also recognised how long it took for us to reach that moment, so I said with caution that this data mine is still in early days, and things like ripping 3D models from the game is another headache entirely, and one that could probably take a long time to solve. Well, forget what I said last month, because thanks to new additions to the team, they're digging on some next level business right about now. And they're finding things, from both the retail version and that legendary E3 1996 demo. They're finding wonderful, confusing, mysterious things, and I need to talk about it. So, if you need that recap, then watch the two previous videos first to get all the context. Other than that, here we go. A set of unused sprites featuring Nightmare and Eggs, both unhatched and hatched, had been discovered in a 2012 PC port of the 2008 remake. It has now been confirmed that these unused enemy eggs originate from the Sega Saturn version. These eggs seem to imply that at one point, the minions in each level were going to be able to reproduce independently from the Nightopian creatures. We're unsure as to why this feature was removed, though if I were to hazard a guess, it might have been considered inconvenient game design if the enemy AI were programmed to repopulate a level on their own accord. Especially in a game where item and enemy placement is crucial to achieving a cohesive flow throughout the level, if enemies started popping up all over the place, then that flow would have been ruined. But that's just my speculation on it, and it's not a confirmed reason for why this feature was cut. While digging through the files, Ketrin found a sprite of a spiked ball object located in the data for Claus's boss arena. There is also a sprite for a much larger singular spike located in the same area. We're unsure as to what the purpose of these objects were, or how they would have been implemented into Claus's stage. Elliot's level, Frozen Bell, has an unused sign which reads under construction. We're not sure where in the level this item was supposed to appear, or if it was intentionally meant for this level in the first place. Knights fans might recognise the term under construction as sounding somewhat familiar. Elliot has another level called Stick Canyon, for which the theme song for that level is titled Under Construction. Furthermore, Stick Canyon's visual design is based on a construction site, featuring heavy industrial machinery. It could be that this asset ended up in Frozen Bell by mistake before getting cut entirely, though that's just my personal speculation on it. These joined hoops contain rotating blue and yellow orbs that hold the entire structure together. At one point in development, there had been additional varieties of these orbs, one as a red variant and one as a green version. Furthermore, these items also seem to have a different interaction animation. Normally, when Knights flies through a hoop, all the parts slingshot outwardly until they disappear. But these yellow and blue orbs have an unused animation, showing the item popping like a balloon instead. It's unsure why the animation goes unused, or what the coloured variants could have meant for these objects. An unused spinning sprite, resembling that of a jester's hat, was located within the game's collectible assets. While the hat doesn't seem to entirely resemble Knights' own hat, it's likely that this would have linked to Knights in some way. The fact that this item was located within the collectible item data means it's considered to be part of general gameplay. Perhaps it was some sort of scrapped extra life feature? Though it's honestly hard to tell. The final level takes place in a dreamscape of Twin Seed City. The platform that you begin the level on is part of the city street, which has been ripped from the ground and is now floating high in the air. This platform contains grass, part of a turn in the road from a nearby street, and this odd circle that contained nothing. And honestly, that nothingness has always looked odd to me. Well, it turns out that something was actually meant to appear there. While Giggly Man was digging through the data for Twin Seeds, trying to find something else entirely, he stumbled upon sprites of a palm tree which was meant to appear within the circle. This mock-up image shows us how the tree would have looked on the platform, and it coincides with rendered images of Twin Seeds that show identical palm trees dotted along the roadsides. 
It's unknown why this tree goes unused, which is a shame because I personally think that without it, the area continues to look like it's missing something. As for what Giggly Man was originally looking for when digging into Twin Seeds' level data, there appears to be two unused buildings that would have appeared during the level. Why these buildings were cut is also unknown. Knights has a few unused facial expressions located within the game's data. Regular fans of Knights into Dreams will recognise the character's standard smiling face, as well as their shocked expression for when they take damage. The unused faces show Knights pulling a grumpy pout, a huge mischievous sharp toothed grin, and a version of that same grin but with the cheeks pulled outwardly. It's unknown where these faces would have been used during gameplay, but we can speculate a little. It's possible that the grumpy pout would have occurred while Knights is in the Idia Palace, waiting for you to dualize with them. During this moment, you can tease Knights a little by pretending that you're going to walk away. Knights then accidentally bangs their head on the inside of the palace, and it's possible that this facial expression could have appeared during that moment, helping to signify Knights' displeasure at being pranked. The sharp tooth grin is even more interesting as it seems to also solve a mystery from one of the previous videos. While it's unknown when Knights would have performed this facial expression, the texture itself seems to link up conveniently with one of the unused big head models that I spoke about in a previous video. The smallest of the big head models has the perfect amount of room for the grinning texture to sit on. It seems to further confirm that this model was meant to be used with this texture, because when the texture is applied to Knights' normal head model, it looks incorrect, and quite frankly terrifying. Fans should recognise that the alternative version of this texture is a reference to the character's famous huge grin from the opening intro FMV. As I said, we have no idea where in the game these grins would have been used, but thanks to Ketrin and Grema Warden, a mock-up was created, presuming that it might have looked something like this. And I honestly love it to bits. I wish this grin was used in the game because it perfectly demonstrates Knights' mischievous nature in one single expression. The character was never meant to be a clean-cut hero like Sonic, but rather more of an anti-hero with a rebellious and carefree nature. That's something I hugely adore about Knights, and I love the fact that there's an expression displaying this attitude perfectly. I just really wish they didn't cut it. Stop everything. Stop everything. We've got another discovery that just happened. Literally, just as I finished recording the voiceover for this video, another big discovery came through. Grammar Warden has discovered an unused, low-level Nightmare and Minion enemy, and with it comes a small string of possible implications. The Nightmare appears in Puffy's boss arena on a painting in the background. However, due to the Sega Saturn's low rendering distance, the wall in which this painting appears on isn't visible. It is visible in the HD remaster, but it's not a very clear image. Grandma data mined the image itself, while Ketrin created a cleaner, tidier sketch of it. What's interesting about this creature is how the mysteries surrounding it only grow stranger the further we fall down this rabbit hole. See, Puffy's art gallery consists of low-level minion Nightmaren, with this particular minion being the odd one out because it doesn't appear in the game. That said, we might actually have a name for this creature. During the ending credits of the game, artwork appears of every character along with a nameplate graphic. In the game's data, there exists a nameplate for Cruel which goes unused. The reason it goes unused is because the Cruel minion is already featured as part of a duo enemy named Cruel and Pole, and with an unused solo nameplate, it implies that Cruel might have also appeared as a solo enemy at some point as well. With the artwork in Puffy's gallery featuring one minion as the odd one out, and a singular unused name tag of Cruel being found in the data, it's likely that this creature is Cruel but older. And then because I was on a complete mad one, I think I might have stumbled upon something even stranger. And this is all theorising, but I think I might have found a really, really weird connection. Namely, the young version of Cruel appears to be some sort of tadpole creature. And if this unused Marin is an adult version of Cruel, then during its adult years, it gains some significant colours in the forms of yellow, green and blue. You want to know what other creature in Nights into Dreams wears these colours? Gilwing. Furthermore, Gilwing's base design is of a frog and dragon hybrid. Gilwing is a frog dragon. Baby Cruel is a tadpole. Do you see where I'm going with this? With Baby Cruel being some sort of tadpole creature, and with the possible adult Cruel suddenly gaining Gilwing's colours, it could be strongly considered 
that this type of enemy eventually grows to become a Gilwing. I feel like that paranoid guy with the insane look on his face as he loses himself to his own theory, but seriously, if my crackpot theory lines up, then the discovery of this unused Nightmaren might have just become a missing link in some sort of abandoned evolution tree for Gilwing. What the hell is this data mine turning into? Oh my God! Now I'm going to talk about the 1996 E3 beta demo. These discoveries are only found in the data for the demo and are not in the final retail release. Ketrin was able to manually piece together an unused image that can be located in the data for the demo's title screen. The image depicts a very slightly altered version of Spring Valley's background render. What is notable about this unused image is the text that accompanies it. It features graphics for the words title, image and song. The fact that these assets were located in the title screen data leads one to believe that this might have been an early version of the title screen with placeholder text. It's also possible that this might have been an abandoned advertisement screen which might have been used to advertise the game in the run up to its release. Another potential theory is that it might have been leftovers for some sort of basic debug menu. Ultimately though, we're not entirely sure what it would have been actually used for. Now, here's where things start getting a little bit strange, and due to a small series of events, another huge mystery has begun within the project. If you recall in my last video, I began talking about an odd object that I dubbed the Blue Door, which could be seen in very old stock footage recorded during development. This footage was from a much earlier build, one predating the demo itself. The footage displays assets that are not present in Knights' usual gameplay. However, Ketrin had been able to locate assets for the weird blue door in the file data for the E3 demo. So, despite the blue door no longer being used in the game, the demo still contains traces of the assets data. That in itself was a huge discovery. I can now confirm since making the last video, Ketrin continued data mining this asset and we have an update. But there is a bit of bad news. It appears all the colour palette data for this object is incorrect within the files. To remedy this setback, Ketrin utilised the palette data for another in-game object as a substitute and reconstructed the blue door with this palette instead. So while it is not the correct colours for this object, despite the setback, this reconstruction helps to provide us with a clearer look at the textures themselves. Firstly, what's notable about the textures for this blue door is the fact that it appears to have two sets of textures. There is a basic set of plain colour textures, and then there is another set showing a more detailed design, featuring decorative engraving and pattern work. Furthermore, part of the design seems to incorporate elements of what appears to be wings. At least, that's what they look like to me, which leaves me wondering what they might have been in reference to. We're unsure as to why there are two sets of textures for this object, though if we consider that the stock footage shows the door using the plain textures, one could speculate that the second set might be the textures that become active once the object has been successfully interacted with, so it's possible the blue door would gain this detailed look once a specific condition had been met. Again, this is just speculation. It's very difficult to say for certain what this object was as it doesn't resemble anything else in the game. The second point of interest regarding this bizarre object is something which I'd like you to pay very close attention to, namely this part in particular the curling metal framework. Just keep it in your mind for the time being. In my last video, while I spoke about this unidentified object, DreamDragon27 left a comment saying that they noticed something. In a very, very small blink and you'll miss it section of the video, just as Elliot destroys the beta idiot capture, the camera dramatically pans around him, and as the camera swings around, for just a few frames, what essentially amounts to only a couple of milliseconds of footage, a bizarre orange structure can be seen in the background. I hadn't noticed it at all, and I have absolutely no idea how Dream Dragon noticed it either, but their observation was about to become another piece of the puzzle in this ongoing mystery. Let me explain. Due to the small amount of time that this object is on screen, coupled together with the fact that the resolution quality of this video is pretty poor, it's difficult to figure out what that object is, but we know this much for certain. No other object in the Frozen Bell level looks anything like this orange structure. If we look closely, it almost appears to be some kind of house, but it's difficult to be sure. I reported Dream Dragon's discovery to Ketrin, who upon even closer inspection noticed something else about it, namely, 
this bizarre orange building seems to have the exact same swirly metal framework that the blue door has on it. You can just about see it, but it is there. Whatever this orange structure was, it shares a specific design aesthetic with the blue door. And the reason this has become a point of interest is because in the final game, this type of metal framework is not commonly seen anywhere. The closest resemblance to it are the metal pipes sticking out from the blue chip container boxes, and even then, they're not as elaborate or widely used. But here, in an earlier build of Knights, from what we can gather from this low quality stock footage, we now have two unidentified structures located within Frozen Bell, both of different colours and shapes, linked together by this particular metal framework design aspect. Is the orange structure another type of door? Were there numerous types of different coloured doors within Frozen Bell or the other levels? Are these structures even doorways at all for that matter? We have no idea what they are or what their purpose was within the level, but due to these recent observations, it's become one of the bigger mysteries surrounding this entire project. And for the time being, the mystery remains unsolved while the data mine continues. I was going to end the video around this point because these bizarre twists and turns seemed like a good cliffhanger to leave things on, but then something else happened. Remember how I said in the last video that data mining 3D models was going to take time? Well, the project suddenly gained a valuable new recruit in the form of Andreas Scholl. See, for those of you keeping an eye on Twitter's Sega Saturn related discussions might recognise this person's name. And that's because he's the guy responsible for reverse engineering Sonic Team's other cult classic title, Burning Rangers, which is a Sega Saturn game. He's also recently gotten into reverse engineering Shining Force 3 as well, which is also a Sega Saturn game. You want to know what else is a Sega Saturn game? Knights into bloody dreams, and because someone told him about this data mine, Andreas has brought all of his expertise to this project. So what does that mean? Well, it means we have another breakthrough. Thanks to Andreas joining the team, the data mine has breached the files containing 3D model assets. Yes, 3D models are now also being ripped from Nights into Dreams. This is an insane level of progress that I never expected to see. The project just keeps on growing at a crazy rate. My last video was telling you we had never made progress like this before, and here I am in the very next video telling you we've made more progress since the last time I said it. And it's still going. This runaway train is moving at a speed that I can't keep up with because literally, as I'm writing this paragraph, responding to the fact that we're data mining 3D models out of Nights into Dreams, Andreas has also begun to figure out how the animation data works now too. And I haven't even begun speaking about that before someone else named Starlight also joined the project and has begun developing a tool that views and edits map data, showcasing their progress with a flattened version of Spring Valley that they call the Salad Plane. What is going on? Every time I receive an update, I'm just sitting there like, what on earth is going on? What's happening now? It's madness. This is beautiful, beautiful madness. And speaking of beautiful madness, it's probably time for me to address the elephant in the room. I don't want to string you along with this, so I'll start by saying that we have not found Self. It would be unfair to pretend we found him when we haven't, and I'm not trying to bait none of you with this topic either. I recognise how hot this subject is, so I'm not going to miss any of you around. That being said, just because we haven't found Self, doesn't mean that there isn't a discussion worth having regarding him. And just because we haven't discovered him directly, doesn't mean there haven't been any discoveries at all. Because there certainly has been. For those that don't know, Self was a boss that was cut from the final version of the game, and the mystery surrounding him has only grown stronger with time. And sadly, that's what this topic requires from me. A whole lot of time because I need to cover 25 years of context. So, to give the mystery the respect it deserves, my next video will be dedicated entirely to self. But before I go, I'm going to leave you with something. I mean, I wouldn't just name drop self without good reason. For decades, the fans have followed a tiny breadcrumb trail as they attempted to uncover what this boss looked like. And this datamine project is providing us with the closest shot we have at finding self. 
the closest we've ever been in fact, because while we were focused on finding assets regarding the blue door that I spoke about earlier, when Ketrin asked Andreas to search the data for a 3D model of that object, Andreas accidentally discovered these instead. What you're looking at are unused 3D models of two sets of emblem designs. These emblems were data mined from the beta demo's common level objects file, complete with numerous different colour palettes between them. These emblems take the form of two different character head shapes. One head shape seems to resemble that of Riala's, or possibly Knight's, while the other is of an unidentifiable character. This head shape doesn't match any other character from Knights into Dreams. I'm not saying that this emblem belongs to self, but I am definitely speculating that it might be. What on earth is going on indeed? <laughs>